Hey, I'm Rev, and today we're going to be going over the Raj and the Purring Liar deck. This deck is rather polarizing. Um, just like the light blue deck, the Orgnum deck, this deck really warps games in what can be perceived as a negative manner. Now, that's up for you to decide. That's up for the community as a whole to, to decide whether they like this deck in the game or not. Um, I don't have a huge problem with the deck, but it can really warp games in a negative fashion. It, it can make games last a long time <laughs> if you let it. But there are some very interesting cards in this deck. Um, I also want to give a little bit of a disclaimer. I am not the end-all be-all uh, source of knowledge for this game. I'm just a player. I like playing the game. These are my thoughts on the game. I am reasonably high rated. Right now I'm sitting at rank 16, which is a little bit lower than I normally am on the ladder. But I'm going to try to fight for, for that top spot by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, I guess I don't have the entire day tomorrow, but most of the day. Uh, I'm gearing up for a, for a decent run. But let's jump into the, into the deck. The Patron Power. Upon activation, create one Bewilderment card and place it in your opponent's cooldown pile. The requirements is to pay three coin. This is what warps the game. If you allow your opponent to just do this every turn without recourse, if you're not continually upgrading your deck, if you aren't counter countering the deck, um, you will lose to this Hero Power. This Hero Power will just win. Um, eventually they'll find a way to win they'll find a way to get to 40 you will continually just draw hands of bewilderment cards and it won't be much fun the game will take a very very long time if you let it there are ways to counter this hero power mainly in green um, but there are there are ways that you can you can make it so that this hero power is not as punishing Basically, you need to stack your deck. You can either outdraw it with purple cards, which is a lot harder than just stacking your deck with the green cards, or or you, you use green. Uh, green is the natural counter to this deck. Or Orgnum. You can also use Orgnum. If they fill your deck with cards, you're actually... You know, you're just going to win with the Orgnum hero power, the, the light blue hero power. Or patron power, I'm sorry. But, let's jump into the deck itself. Bag of Tricks is a contract action for 7 gold, meaning that it does not stay in your deck. An opponent discards one card from their hand at the start of the turn. Combo 2, draw a card. Combo 3, opponent discards one card from their hand at the start of the turn. Now, if you can get the combo 3, obviously this card is an A. Uh, the problem is getting to combo 3 in orange, that is not something that usually happens. This card is a C- to a D+. The effect to, to uh, have them discard a card, you draw a card, is something that you can get for 4 in purple. So it's, it's not very good, um, this contract action. The Bewilderment token is just a, a, a card that takes up space in your opponent's deck. Um, it's not really a rateable card. Grand Larceny. Here is a good card. For 5 gold, you gain 5 coin. Now that is a rate that I can sign up for. For combo 2, you knock out one of your opponent's active agents. This is usually not applicable, although you do run into some people who go agent crazy, and this will be very good against that. Now, gain 5, go gain five coin always very good like always very good this is a card that I take early I take often I take late game even um, it, it's it's a very good card it, it's an A jarring lullaby for six gold you can knock out two agents or combo two gain three coin combo three opponent discards a card from their hand at the start of the turn this is a D um, mainly because most people will not have two agents. So the first ability on the card is a brick, like 85 to 90% of the time. So 
really you you need a plethora of orange cards in order to make this card good so you need to consistently get the gain three coin clause on this to make this good and if you can combo three great like you're doing great you're probably winning if you can combo three in orange let's move on to the next card jeering shadow is a four gold uh, combo two opponent loses one prestige this is an F it just is it's not good uh, it's an agent it's a low cost agent which means it doesn't have much value with Halalu and removing one prestige from your opponent is not very relevant in most cases now to a good card moonlit illusion it's a contract action for three gold you destroy one of your cards that are in play or in your hand from the game and uh, if you combo three miraculously uh, your opponent loses one prestige any card that removes a card from your deck is a good card this is this is a B it's a B plus maybe um, trashing cards if you're familiar with the game Dominion is a very very powerful effect this effect is relevant in this game um, if you can get your your library or your your deck sorry use terms from other games I shouldn't do that but if you can use the the if you can make it so that your deck is smaller so that you can consistently draw your better cards more often it is a very good thing sorry that was that sounded better in my head but Let's move on to the next card. <laughs> Pounce and Profit is uh, is the original form of Grand Larceny. It is still an A minus. It's very good. Prowling Shadow is the upgraded version of Jeering Shadow, uh, making it so that you can gain one coin on its on its activation is not terrible. It's a D minus rather than an F. It's it's you know it's somewhat playable let's go to rings guile this is the upgraded contract um, for seven gold you have your opponent discard a card you draw a card for combo two you draw a card for combo three and for combo three they also discard a card this is only moderately better so whatever I gave what did I give this a, a D it's a D plus for bag of uh, I think I gave bag of tricks a D this is a D plus, Rings Guile. Shadows Slumber. This is another card that is not very good. Knockout, place two of your opponent's active agents, uh, active agents into their cooldown pile. Combo two is gain for a coin. And combo three, opponent discards one card from their hand at the start of the turn. Um, this is an upgraded version of the other card. It is still not good. It is the same grade as the other card. So a D. Sleight of hand. Two gold, gain two coin. For combo two, remove up to one card from the tavern. This is a solid B. It's a B minus. Solid B. Somewhere around there. Um, I'll take it early. Pretty consistently. I will not take this game in the uh, this card in the in the mid game or the late game. Let's move on to another agent. This agent is only moderately better than the other agent because it has six cost instead of uh, four cost or five cost. Um, so this is a, a C minus for the ability to combo two, lose two prestige. You can gain five power with this card with Halalu. That is the best thing that you're gonna get out of it. Swipe is fine, it's whatever. And then we have Twilight Revelry. It's a 10 cost card, which means the barrier for entry is very high. <laughs> and its initial effect is opponent discards one card from their hand at the start of their turn, which is a decent effect if you can loop it every turn. Um, combo two, remove three cards from the tavern. That's fine. Combo three, opponent loses three prestige. You're not gonna do this. And then combo four, draw three cards. You're not gonna, you're not gonna do that either. Uh, this card's a D it's it's bordering F like it's right there <laughs> um, 
In fact, I'm going to give it an F. I, I really am. I think this card is terrible. For 10, for 10 cost, the, this card is awful. Anyway, please let me know what you think I got right, what you think I got wrong. I'd love to hear your own takes on the cards. I'd love to, to open a discourse on Tales of Tribute as a whole. I really enjoy this game. I hope you do too. I hope you all have a wonderful day. My name is Rev. Goodbye.